Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're doing well. Um, now, Mikey Garcia is retired, 34 years of age, and in the last day or two, he's announced that he's not fighting anymore. I didn't think he was 34, but when you look back, he's he actually turned pro in 2006. So yeah, he turned pro young, but time flies. Um, 34 years of age, decided enough's enough. I think with the benefit of hindsight, looking back, you can say that maybe the writing was on the wall. I've got to be honest, I did find this slightly surprising. But he's lost two of his last three fights, both at welterweight. He lost to Sandal Martin last time out, and he he was outpointed a majority decision over ten, but should have been unanimous. And uh, that was in that was last year, and then back in twenty nineteen, he fought Errol Spence and lost widely on the cards. Um, don't think he really won a round, so he didn't win more than one or two rounds, but lasted the distance. And he had a victory, unanimous twelve round decision over Jesse Vargas, sandwiched between those two losses, but. Was never really a welterweight, and I, to this day, I don't really know why he fought at welterweight over the last couple of years of his career. But he jumped up two divisions from lightweight and made that decision. And the last two years of his career have been very sort of strange, like he's almost sort of wasted them, really. But anyway, let's do a little review of his career. Just mention a few basic things. Turned pro in two thousand and six, won his first belt at featherweight. Um, and that was against Orlando Salido, I believe, who, this was in 2013. Um, we know about Orlando Salido, handed Lomachenko his first loss in only Lomachenko's second fight, I think. Uh, tough, grizzled old warrior, Salido. Give anyone a really competitive, good fight. But um, I think he lost, did he lose a technical decision? I think he did. It was an eight-round technical decision to Garcia, and Garcia became world champ, or a belt holder, shall we say, because belt holders are not and world champs. They're often two different things. And that was in 2013. Um, then moved up. Did he make any defences at that time? Let me think. I don't... Offhand, I can't remember whether he did or not. I don't think he did. Or did he may have made one, but I can't remember the name. Anyway, moved up to Super Featherweight the following year, 2014, and fought um, Roman Martinez, three-time WBO belt holder, good fighter, Salido, um, Salido Martinez, good, very good fighter. Um, and he looked the part. I mean, he got rid of Martinez in six, eight rounds, six rounds, eight rounds, something like that, middle rounds. Uh, so, you know, within the space of 18 months, two years, he was a two-weight belt holder, Garcia. And he was flying, absolutely flying. Um, also beat Juan Manuel Lopez, stopped him in four rounds. Lopez was damaged goods because he'd previously been chewed up twice by Salido in upset, what were considered upset defeats. Beat um, Barrios, Barrios, Victor Barrios, uh, in eight rounds. Um, that was, was that before he became champ? It might have been. Um, Elio Rojas beat him in five rounds. And then he, then there was a break after that, a, like a two and a half year break, or maybe pushing on for three years, where um, Garcia had a dispute with top rank, Bob Arum's top rank, and wasn't allowed to fight. They were in court and so on. So he was out of action for a long, long time. But he came back at lightweight and won his third belt against the undefeated Dejan Zlatichinin, Zlatikainen. I've massacred these names, a lot of them. I do apologise, but the guy was undefeated anyway, and Zlatichinen or Zlatikainen or however you want to pronounce it was coming off a very good win over uh, Ricky Burns in in Scotland, I think, and Floyd Burns, and he was WBC world lightweight champ, but Garcia chewed him up and spat him out in only three rounds, took away his undefeated record, and Zlatikainen or Zlatichinen was never the same again. After that, we've got a win over um, Adrian Broner, who we all know about. Outpointed Broner um, easily. Then he took on Sergei Lipinets. Uh, these are all WBC titles. And um, yeah, again, another undefeated fighter. He, he outpointed him. Um, and then he fought, actually, for Ser Sergei Lipinets, was that a. Was that lightweight or or light welterweight? Maybe he was a. Maybe I've got. I'm remembering this wrong. He's a four division champ. He may well have been. Have I got that wrong? I'll have to check on that. If so, 
ignore this video. <laughs> I've obviously remembered it wrong. But uh, he definitely beat he definitely beat Lipinets. I want to say that was a light welterweight fight, but I, could, I can't remember. I can't remember, to be honest with you. Anyway, he took away his undefeated record. He then, I think this is a great, great win. He, he beat Robert Easter Jr. This was in 2018. He outpointed him over 12 rounds. And this, I'm sure this was at lightweight. This was a WB, WBC, or was it? No, it was an IBF. It was WBC, IBF unification. And he beat him over points. I think it was a really, really good win. And so we're talking 2018. So Mikey would have been, you know, 29, 30 in his absolute prime. And you were thinking the guy's won belts at three, possibly four divisions. This guy's beaten good men, some of them undefeated. You know, this guy's flying and he's got another three, four years left. And then suddenly there was this, this abrupt stop. Because in 2019, he jumped up two weights and fought Errol Spence. And yet I was thinking, what's he fighting Spence for? Why is he jumping up two divisions? You know, at lightweight, there's unfinished business. <clears throat> no, I know it was early days for, you know, Devin Haney wasn't on the scene then, not really. And Teofimo Lopez was still coming up and no one had heard of Cambosis. But you had, you had um, Lomachenko still around. Lightweight, you know, that was that was a fight that got away. And if he'd fought Lomachenko and beaten him, I'm not saying he would have done. I mean, I would have. I would have probably favoured Lomachenko back in 2018, 19, whatever. But that's a signature career win. And instead, he jumped up two divisions to fight Errol Spence. I will never understand why, unless he was having serious discipline issues with the weight. And I don't, it never struck me as being someone who, who would do that, who would have issues with, with discipline, um, especially as he's part of that, you know, Garcia family, that Garcia setup. But he lost on points. And then you thought, well, he's going to go down. He's going to go down to at least light welterweight or super lightweight, if you prefer, or maybe even back down to lightweight. He fought Jesse Vargas, um, still at welterweight. And then he fought Sandel Martin. 2020 was the Jesse Vargas fight. And then last year, 2021, was the defeat to Sandel Martin. And you thought, why is he sticking at welterweight? He's not a welterweight. The guy won his first belt at featherweight. So I think his career sort of petered out very poorly. And that raises the question, has he underachieved? I don't know whether I'd go that far. Can you say it? If a guy's won belts in three or four weight divisions, can you say that he's, can you seriously say that he's underachieved? Well, Broner won, won belts in four divisions. I and mean, I don't think anyone doubts that he's underachieved. So you can make the argument, but I think the quality of the wins for Garcia is very, very good. But there are people that got away. There are potential opponents that got away. Um, but, Come on, you know, let's not let's accentuate the positive. He's 34. He's getting out of the game with his faculties intact. He's almost certainly made some serious money. Maybe he'll go into training. Maybe he'll come back. You don't know. But I do feel that he had a bit more to give, could have achieved a bit more, a bit like Andre Ward. Um, but yeah, he, he had a great career. He had a really good career and uh, good luck to the guy if he wants to go away and do his thing, whatever that may be. I'm not going to begrudge him that. I think he's earned the right to do that. His career span, what, 2006 to, what, 16 years. That's quite a long time by modern standards. And he did a lot. Shame about the two and a half years out because of um, Mr. Aram and his uh, cohorts. But, uh, yeah, I'll never understand that jump from lightweight to light welter. Or at the very least, I won't understand why he made that jump, lost, and then didn't come back down. Yeah, intriguing that. Anyway, what do you think of Mikey Garcia? I think he had a very good career. Good luck to the guy. All the best to him and his family. And uh, leave your comments below if you've got any. Subscribe to the channel if you liked what you see. We've got lots of videos for you to peruse. Have a look. Have a nosy. Um, and yeah, hit the like button. That always helps the channel as well. Much love to you all. And we'll speak again soon. Bye for now.